Thank you for tuning in to Crystal Healing. I'm your host, Crystal Heal. Um, on today's Gaudio, I wanted to talk to you guys very, very briefly. Um, and I know I, it's been a while since I talked to y'all. And so thank you all for tuning in. Um, on this Gaudio, I entitled it, The Esoteric Wisdom Hidden in the Allegory of Bruh Man from the Fifth Flow. Now, a lot of y'all may remember the sitcom Martin, you know, uh, Martin Lawrence. Now, if you've watched Martin, then you know Bruh Man. Bruh Man was the dude who always snuck in through the window, through the fire escape, right? When Martin would catch him, he would say, um, Martin would be like, what you, Bruh Man, what are you doing? And he would say, nothing, chilling. You, you, you know Bruh Man. Well, I want y'all to get into a habit of seeing everything in your mundane, everyday, what we call normal life as super normal. Uh, everything in the natural as supernatural, because indeed it is uh, to those who have eyes that see and ears that hear. So today I want to open up the bra man allegory for you so you can kind of see uh, the wisdom in it and what is trying to be said to you. You know, I always say that God is always speaking. Wisdom is always crying out um, to us if we just but listen. And so we're going to delve into some of the wisdom uh, of the allegory of bruh man. Now, when I say allegory, I mean allegory in the same way that all of the characters in the Bible serve as an allegory for deeper truths. They represent deeper things. So bruh man from the fifth flow represents bra man. Now, if you don't know who or what Brahman is in the Hindu religion, there is um, they, they actually have three deities, uh, the creator, the sustainer or preserver, and then the destroyer, Shiva. But the creator is Brahman. Now, Brahman is said to be the universal spirit that pervades all matter, uh, the universal soul. Uh, if you will, or what we sometimes term the higher self. Um, and so that's what Brahman is in the Hindu religion. Now, in this sitcom, Martin, we see we have Brahman. Now, a little trick, a little play with the pronunciation there, but understand that Brahman represents Brahman, um, the universal soul or the higher self. Now, peep the allegory now. Peep the allegory. Bruh man always came in through the window, right? Martin would catch his ass. Now, bruh man, normally he was wearing some, he, he was always wearing some weird clothes. Uh, nine times out of ten, the clothes were going to be smaller uh, than his size. It was always some small ass shorts or little bit of tank, just, just, just small clothing. And sometimes he would even wear some of Martin's clothing. Now, now walk with me on this. I'm going to break it down in just a minute. Sometimes he even wears Martin's clothing and it's usually too small for him. Peace, Carolyn. Peace, Santana. Peace, Shakur, my Dina, Denise Dingle. Peace, everyone who tuned in. Now, Martin would catch him and he would say, uh, you know, you know me, Martin. I'm bruh man from the fifth flow, but he always put up four fingers. Now, we're going to explain to you what that means as well. Always put up four fingers. Now, now, what would he do when he would get in there? He would usually fix himself what he calls a sandwich. He would fix himself a sandwich, eat up Martin's food, you know, do different little things, wear Martin's clothes and and shit like that. And he would always leave out. Through the fire escape. Now, you never seen bruh man come through the front door. Never. Out of all the seasons, you can watch every single episode and you will find bruh man never, ever came through the front door. For all intents and purposes, the only people who see, seen bruh man in there were the people who were in the apartment. Now, I miss you too, Santana. Now, what does that mean esoterically? Bruh man represents bruh man. Now, he he says he lives on the fifth flow, F-L-O, not floor, but flow. Now, why is this important? Because we're talking about frequency, energy and vibration. 
Frequency, energy, and vibration flows. So he lives on the fifth flow. But why does he have the four fingers up? Because it's, he, it's through the fourth dimension. Now, see, even in Scripture, uh, the Apostle Paul talks about he wished above all things that we know the width, the length, the breadth and the depth of the love of God. That's four dimensions, the width, the length, the breadth and the depth of the love of God. Now, we all know that we uh, predominantly live in three dimensions is what they tell us. We're in the third dimension. But see, when you get that fourth dimension, which teaches you the depth of your very being, which teaches you about all the different dimensions, that's the fourth dimension. And you can be said to um, be like a uh, superman or a superhuman or supernatural. This is the, this is where you get your uh, psychic abilities and, and different things like that. Nevertheless, why the fifth flow? I'll tell you why the fifth flow. If you know anything about uh, sacred geometry or math, you know that um, the numbers start with zero and end with 10. Now, uh, if you look at it on a digit by digit basis, that means the numbers start with zero and end with zero because 10 is one zero. Right. But the middle number, the very balance of the numbers is the number five. It is the middle number. Now, we five gets its name from phi. Y'all know about phi? Phi is the golden ratio or also known as the golden mean. Now, you ever read in scripture, it, it always says that Jesus is in the midst or in the middle. It's always directly in the middle. The tree of life is in the midst of the garden. You see, that's that five or that phi. OK, and this is where Brahman, this is where the frequency of Brahman is directly in the middle. The balanced portion, five or five, the golden ratio. So this is why Brahman or Brahman is in the fifth flow. It's the fifth frequency. Now, if you don't understand what I mean by frequency, go back and check my audio I did um, about frequency uh, a couple of weeks ago. Nevertheless, now, continuing on. So we know why bruh man is on the fifth flow because we're talking about frequency. This is the middle frequency, like five or five. OK, and we know why bruh man's holding up the four fingers because it's actually the fourth dimension, even though it's on the fifth flow or frequency. So why is it that bruh man is always depicted wearing smaller clothes than what he is able to fit? And this is because that is symbolizing thoughts. You see, uh, uh, the great spirit or bra man, bra man or, or, or God, the higher self, whatever you want to call it, has to clothe itself in your thoughts. This is what it's talking about when it says that Jesus comes back riding on the clouds. That's the clouds within your mind, your thoughts. OK, but but you see, the great spirit, the great I am. Is, is so great of a being or non-being rather that it cannot be contained in in human thoughts. It really is way bigger than your mind can conceive of. Then you have any thoughts to clothe it in. Kind of like the allegory of Moses meeting the burning bush. You see, the bush was a, a, a covering or a clothing that was uh, too small to house the power of the great I am. And so you've seen the burning outside of the bush because the bush could not contain it. And so bruh man is always seen wearing Martin's clothes, which are too small for him because our thoughts, our thoughts are too small for the infinite great I am. Now, for bruh man. <laughs> now, what else can we say about bruh man? Notice how bruh man never goes through the front door. And I want you to understand that no one will ever see the great spirit into you or exit you. You see, because the kingdom of heaven comes not with observation. 
in the same way that bruh man came into Martin's apartment, not with observation. You see what I'm saying? Then a lot of times where bruh man would be sitting at the at the kitchen table fixing him a, a sandwich <laughs> and Martin would walk in. Bruh man would tell Martin, well, what are you doing up? I usually have the place to myself around about this time. And that is signifying the fact that the God within us is in us. You understand? And we are asleep and not even aware that God is moving things around and taking things out and putting things in. You understand? But every now and again, we wake up and we see we see the infinite great I am, the higher self clothed in our thoughts, in our very own mind. And we can commune with the higher self as with a friend. You understand? But the wisdom, the, it, even if you don't understand what I'm saying about bra man and how bra man represents bra man. Grasp what I'm saying about there's wisdom in all around you in everyday things that you take for granted in, in, in even just a story as Martin. There's two ways to look at everything in life. You could look at it very, uh, uh, you know, mundane, like very normal, like, oh, it's just something to entertain you. But I want you to understand that all this stuff is not here to entertain you. It's here to educate you. But because. You can't see because you can't hear. You think it's just entertainment. But I ask you to open your mind, open your eyes and open your ears and begin to dig a little bit deeper and see what wisdom is trying to teach you in these stories. I tell you all the time that everything is teaching you about you. And even with bra man and Martin, it's all speaking about you. Now, I'm not going to go into telling you what Pam represents. I'm not going to go into telling you what Gina represents. Could it be genes? Hmm? Hmm? Do the, your genes have some influence over you? Hmm? Or Tommy, which means twin, who doesn't actually have a job because Tommy is not the source, but the copy. <laughs> But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to let you I'm going to let you use your critical thinking and, 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 and try to figure that out on yourself. But but just understand what bra man represents. He represents the bra man, the great spirit who comes through the fire escape. OK, and you will never see him go through the front door and see this ladder that he climbs up and down. That's what they call Jacob's ladder. Mm hmm. Yeah, I submit to you that it has 33 rungs. But anyhow, let me check some of these comments and then I'm going to let y'all go. I just wanted to drop that jewel in your lap. Just remind you that everything that uh, looks a certain way is not exactly how it seems. Everything is speaking to you. But are you listening? Are you listening? Terry Harris, peace. I'm in Bay Galactic Being, peace, love, and light, sis. Ty Randolph, peace. Gwen, peace, Gwen, Aristotle Reed, peace, reflection, Maya Maya, another reflection. Gwendolyn says, countless symbols in the media, even Samuel Jackson's movie depicted as a mad neighbor cop when he was killed. Yeah, it's everywhere, Gwen. Even, uh, uh, you know, the old, I'm, I'm tired of these snakes on this motherfucking plane. What plane is he talking about? The earth plane. That's what plane. You understand? And, and, and so even within that movie, there's an earth plane, there's an airplane, there's many different planes, and they're all infinite. But what is Samuel L. Jackson trying to tell you, even in the names of these characters, you know? Yeah. Thank you, Miss Carolyn. Maya Mott says, amazing, sis. Thanks. Martelia Smith, peace. Peace. Maya Mott says, you just made me check my surroundings. Yeah, you should. Everything that you see, look on your cereal box. Uh, uh, hopefully you don't mess with cereal like that. But, uh, you know, it just 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 it's, it's all around you. It's literally your world is saturated with wisdom. 
saturated with wisdom, but we 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 have no sense of wonder anymore. You know, we we believe we know what it is. We believe, oh, it's just frivolous entertainment. Um, but nothing is as it seems. Everything is significant and representative of a deeper truth. Just open your eyes and open your ears. Like if it, you know, it, it just baffles me how people can't see the symbolism all around you. You know, symbols. Symbols is the language of angels. And when I say angels, I mean messengers, messengers of who? The higher self of God, your subconscious, whatever you want to call it. They're called archetypes is what Carl Jung, the great psychologist, called them archetypes. And this is exactly what it is. But because we clothe them in different flesh, we don't recognize them. So when you look at Martin and you see bra man coming through the window, you just see some black homeless man coming through the window. But you don't never stop to think that this bra man is an archetype for a deeper truth, an eternal truth called bra man. You understand? And it, it, that's what spelling is. It's a spell to make you think because it's spelled different. You're saying something different. But understand that the universe cannot spell the universe hears. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the words with God. The universe does not spell you do. So you think that you're saying something different because it's spelled different, but you're not. So bra man is bra man. Grasp. And so even when you're watching little sitcoms and shows or whatever, whatever, listen phonetically to what you're saying. Not how it's spelled. You see, they know that we as humans, we see in pictures. So when we say a word, we also see the word. But I want to I want to implore you to try not to see the word and hear the word. And you will find out a many dark secrets just by doing that, by applying that science. You understand? Todd says, I am now just getting connection. I am able to hear now. Oh, we had some technical difficulties. And Carolyn says, whoa, what a jewel. Our reflections are too playing their cosmic role. Exactly, Mia Ma. Everybody is exactly where they're supposed to be doing exactly what they're supposed to do. All things are pure to he who is pure. What do I mean by that? All things are pure to he who is pure. That means if you have a pure heart, then you automatically have a pure mind. Because the mind and the heart are connected once they're pure. And that means you see everything in its pure light. You could see things from a secular, what they call a secular view, or you could see it from a righteous view. And when you look at the world from a righteous view, everything is exactly how it should be. You understand? Because it is all preaching to you the gospel of Christ, which is wisdom. Christ is the wisdom of God personified. So you see, when these people talk about, I am Christ, or look over there, there's Christ over there, or look over here, Christ is over here. Well, you could tell them exactly what the scripture says. Don't follow them because Christ is the wisdom of God personified. And there's no lack of wisdom here. There's a lack of sight. There's a lack of understanding. There's a lack of listening, but there is no lack of wisdom here. It's like a fish swimming in water and they trying to sell you water. You understand? Water being wisdom. You're swimming in wisdom. It's everywhere. Facts. Everybody exactly where they where they need to be in the trick. You see, the temptation is, is to get you to step outside of the perfection that you already are. They try to sell you perfection. They tell you to change this, change that, do this, move here, wear your hair this way, eat this here and all of these things. And you will be God then. Or you will be connected to God or you will be like God or you will be perfect. Then you'll be, you know, they tell you God makes mistakes. God has made this imperfect and that imperfect. And I want to tell you, that's all a lie. Everything is completely perfect right now. Right now. Do not yield to the temptation to do this and do that to be perfect. All you got to do is be still and know that you already are. You just have to accept into your heart, the truth, which is perfection, balance, phi. Facts. <laughs> Peace, Kimberly Brooke Halls. Peace. My mind says, you know, I don't. I know, sis. I know. Oh, I know who I know those who don't have strings attached. 
And that's going to be my next God, yo. Living the no strings attached life. I know those who are, are Pinocchios and I know those who are Pinocchios. You understand? There's a difference between Pinocchio and Pinocchio. Okay. Pinocchio got strings on him. Mm-hmm. And he just wandering around looking for somebody to make him into a real boy. Now, see, they got a lot of Pinocchios running around here trying to sell you some knowledge. But if you just look a little bit closer, like in them NASA videos, you'll see they got strings attached to their back. You understand? That's not the ones that's going to save you. You understand? It's the Pinocchios. Neo as in the matrix, the one, the Pinocchio Neos is the ones that are going to save you because they already. And when I say save you, I lose the, I, I use that very loosely because the only thing that can save you is wisdom. No man or no woman on the face of this earth can save you because you cannot take them with you. You born alone, you die alone. Do you understand what I'm telling you? The only thing you can take with you is the wisdom that you have garnered from this life. That's right. Puppet master. Everybody want to be a puppet master. Nobody want to be a puppet. You feel what I'm saying? It's the Pinocchios, the ones who have become a real boy. They have no strings attached. There's no puppet master pulling their strings because they have the wisdom inside of them. And you see, that's that's the whole goal here. Is to be able, see, when wisdom is inside of you, you can readily recognize it outside of you. I'm going to say that again. When wisdom is inside of you, you can readily recognize it outside of you. But when it's not inside of you, you search for it. You search for it high and you search for it low. Anybody that look like they got wisdom, you tacking on to them like a, like a moth to a flame. But if you learn to use your critical thinking, if you learn to just open your eyes, you're floating in wisdom. There's no need to become a slave. There's no need to become a vagabond. There's no need to become anything. Just accept what you already are. Mm -hmm. Peace, El Marley. Yeah. Aristotle says, so glad to find people who truly understand heartwarming. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling, Aristotle, especially in this day and age. You know, people have walked a millennia of this earth knowing the truth and um, had no one to share that truth with, you know. And uh, we're coming into a time where, um, you know, as the scripture says, at the end of days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So you find that more and more people understand the truth. You're no longer getting stoned and burned at the stake. You ain't got to hide in caves. You ain't hanging from trees and all this, this here foolishness like it has been in the past because this is the end of days, the beginning of eternity. Do you understand? And the spirit will be poured out on all flesh. And so your young men will dream dreams and and things like that. So you'll listen to your children talking and, and you'll hear esoteric wisdom in their words. You'll listen to to, uh, you know, just regular programs and, and you'll hear the wisdom in their words. It's called the land of Beulah. B-E-U-L-A-H. If you've ever read this book called uh, The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, uh, very, very famous. It was uh, second only to uh, the, the, the Bible uh, back in the day uh, because of its esoteric wisdom of, of explaining to you the path of coming to this awareness of your oneness with the world in which you live and the great spirit that controls that world. Nevertheless, in that book, uh, what I'm speaking about right now, when you can hear wisdom coming from people's mouths, even though they think they're talking about their day at work or they think they're talking about, uh, uh, you know, whatever they think they're talking about. You hear you hear the voice of God coming superimposed upon their voice. That is called the land of Beulah. And so when you begin to do that, I want you to know that you are fast approaching upon the shores of eternity. 
the shores of what they call the golden land. Uh, again, that is neither here nor there. That's a bunch of extra information, but apparently it was meant for somebody or I wouldn't never said it. Everything here has a purpose. Islam, Islam family. Well, anyway, I thank you all for tuning in. Um, to those who are just now tuning in, I uh, implore you to go back to the beginning of this audio and listen to it. Uh, packed full of, of good esoteric wisdom. And if anything, it'll help you um, to open your mind a little bit and begin to to look at things a little bit differently. So anyhow, thank you for tuning in. I love all you guys. And um, I'll try to do a little uh, audio a little bit later on. So I hope to see all you there. Peace, 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 y'all.